Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today what we're doing is taking a quick look, a very quick look at iOS 15, watchOS 8 as well as tvOS 15. Initially I was slightly hesitant to actually install the beta because this is my daily uh, driver essentially. This is my daily iPhone. Um, I use it for work and same thing for the watch. And the main concerns really were app compatibility in terms of any crashes, anything like that, as well as battery life. And thankfully I can report that whilst it's not brilliant, um, as you can see from there, I've been up since uh, four o'clock this morning. It's now, as you can see, 4 p.m. so I've been up for 12 hours and obviously with this being a beta I'm constantly playing on it um, and trying to figure out all the new tweaks um, all, the, all the refinements essentially. Overall I can say so far um, my impressions of iOS 14 in particular is that it's it's very much just that it's, it's very much a refinement so during WWDC the actual Apple event I was actually very underwhelmed um, I, if, any, if anything I could actually go as far as saying I was actually slightly disappointed in how little Apple actually changed um, but having actually downloaded the uh, firmware and updated all of my devices there's something on almost every device that I absolutely love. So um, it's, it's the little things. So like, for example, on the watch, we have the new um, accessibility features. So I've got it enabled where, so if I double pinch and then a single pinch will basically cycle through all of these little icons, as you can see on the screen just there. A double pinch goes backwards, as you can see, and a, a clench opens it up and a double clench mimics the home button. So simple things like this, it's just refinements. Um, what happens is that little blue icon disappears after a little while or whenever it goes to sleep. Similarly on the iPhone as well, it's all the little refinements um, that I've actually been uh, detailing on my uh, Twitter feed. So for those of you who are wanting more in-depth information, I've actually gone a, a lot more in-depth in terms of highlighting the various differences. So for example, the private relay, which is their sort of VPN service, um, that initially it didn't quite register, iCloud Plus, that kind of thing, but it did kick in. Um, just seemed to start working automatically, probably just the servers weren't set up. Um, the watch, we do have some very nice uh, um, changes to the HomeKit app on the watch, which I now love. I absolutely hate the, the HomeKit functionality on the watch previously. It was just so many icons, whereas now they've kind of copied what they do with the uh, Apple TV, where they give you cameras and then they just give you some shortcuts. And it's a little bit more smart because it does actually change depending on what room you're in and what sort of um, uh, functionality it thinks you need based on where you are or whichever ones you use most most often. So as we can see here, similar to the iPhone, you do have some icons along the top. You, then you have a few of your sort of regular uh, icons that you use. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not doing the best job of showing this being uh, right-handed. And then the main thing is you come into cameras and you've got all your cameras right there. Uh, cameras is something that we will touch on a little later on as well. HomeKit on the iPhone is pretty much the same. The, it does have a slight little bug where when you first open it, it does have a white pane at the top just there. You might be able to see it, but it does disappear after a little while. Um, and if anything, I'd say HomeKit is a little bit snappier. Um, it's a little bit faster um, just doing everything. So if I click that, as you can see, nice and responsive behind me. Yeah, another thing that has changed is so the animation or these sort of control center itself has changed slightly. Uh, for anybody that doesn't have an Apple Watch, this might not be so evident, but anybody who's used an Apple Watch for a little while will instantly r recognize the fact that these are just slightly smaller, so you can actually get slightly more icons on the screen at the same time. Next thing that I did highlight in a video was the new animation uh, for your notifications. And uh, just the animations throughout iOS 15 are not only faster, but they seem smoother at the same time as well. Uh, another kind of strange one at the moment that is a bit of a bug where you can access the 
uh, search option even when you're on the lock screen. So iCloud Plus um, did kick in automatically as I said. Uh, it's not extra. Some people did report on their Twitter feeds that they were being charged an additional whatever fee which, whichever tariff you sign up for. So I just use the 79p uh, 50 gigabyte tariff and it's not an additional 70p it basically just overwrites your existing one. So basically it's still only 79p, it's just giving you a, a iCloud Plus rather than normal iCloud. Okay, so another cool little thing for me in particular. So as you can see just behind me, and this is coming into the sort of tvOS side of things. So I've got a soundbar just there and my Apple TV is just at the bottom. It's probably just out of shot. You might not even be able to see it just down here, um, just down here. And what happens is whenever I'm using the Apple TV remote built in to control center, and what I'll do is because I was last using the uh, living room one, it wasn't actually switched, but you might just be able to faintly see just there that it's actually got some icons there. And if you look on the soundbar just down here, you will notice that the volume is actually changing and that is with every click that I'm actually doing. So I'm using the physical buttons on the iPhone to actually adjust the volume on the soundbar. Now, this won't work for everybody. It only works if your Apple TV is actually connected to a soundbar as opposed to being connected to the TV. If you're using eARC, I don't believe this will work. I have tested it on my other TV and it doesn't work. So I think that's just uh, my setup, but that's that's a cool little feature. That's, um, I, it may have been there before, but I just never noticed it. Okay, so other than that, um, iOS 15, um, I've, I did mention to somebody yesterday the fact that um, somebody did ask me what, uh, how it feels, um, how stable it is and everything like that. And the, the sort of best description I could give was this feels like iOS 14.8 as opposed to being iOS 15. So rather than being a brand new firmware, it feels like they've literally just taken iOS 14.7 added a load of features and basically just refined everything. So everything is really, really buttery smooth. Safari is really, really fast in comparison to um, what I've used in the past. Um, certain websites um, that usually take a long time, as well as obviously having the option for uh, the VPN that's built in. So in order to access that, you go into, not that, it goes into mobile data, and then just down here, you have your sort of option for iCloud uh, private relay. So basically that's giving you the options to actually choose um, if you wanna hide hide your, your information. And then if we also come into iCloud, you then also have this further section where you can choose whether you want to have it uh, preserve an approximate location. So if you want it, a VPN from the same country or whether you basically you can just go anywhere. So this could be anywhere in the world. So that's a cool little feature. Right, coming on to tvOS and the main things for me for, with tvOS is HomeKit. And that's something that instantly, um, as soon as I loaded this up, it's so much better. Now I have posted on my Twitter feed quite a few posts about um, spatial audio, Dolby Atmos, uh, the AirPods Max, as well as a couple of other things, the controllers. So this whole section here is slightly different now where you have a few extra options. Um, you've got the plus button right there. You have this share play option. Uh, what we'll do is first, we'll just have a brief look. So you have a quick access to game controllers right in the control center, which makes it a lot easier than diving through menus. Um, and then you have the HomeKit section and this, and on initial glance, it looks the same. So you still only have scenes here, but where this gets so much better is the very uh, first sort of cameras pane, which is your favorite cameras. And as soon as this opens up, it instantly makes everything so much better because now what you can do is if, if I come into this room, if I click on this little button right at the bottom now, what you can see is you have options for the LEDs. So I can now finally control everything that's actually in this room um, and actually have it turn on and off, everything like that. I think I may have actually unplugged my horror hub, which is why that particular one isn't working. Similarly, if I come into, uh, let's say the back garden, it gives me the option just there. So you've got two options in the bottom 
bottom right, if I click on the left one, it gives me the options for basically turning on outside lights and things like that. And the other good thing about this is every single camera is live at the same time. So you don't have to actually choose which feed you want to load up. So that's something that I've been asking for quite a while. And finally, they have actually added that in. Now, there are a few other refinements and things like that. Other people will dive into other settings. But essentially, this gives me the main thing that I was hoping for with tvOS. As you can see, there are a few uh, UI bugs, both on tvOS as well as on the iPhone as well. Um, and that there is the odd crash here and there. I've had Twitter crash uh, a few times, uh, nothing major, um, nothing that would cause a problem or, or not want to update to it for reliability reasons. But yeah, so far so good in terms of everything that's in there. There are a few things that are um, seemingly broken. What I am also doing is updating this older phone because a few people did ask me yesterday on Twitter, this is my daughter's uh, iPhone 10. So this is the oldest iPhone that I actually own that can actually get uh, iOS 15. So we'll be, as you can see, I am currently in the process of updating this as we speak. Um, hopefully I shan't, shan't have any issues with this because on, on my personal device, it's been perfectly fine. So I've no doubt that that will also be fine. Um, I will do follow-ups. Um, if you want it, I will do more in-depth uh, videos in terms of my sort of favorite features of each each platform. So the iPhone, the watch, uh, and tvOS. Now, the one thing that I won't be doing is macOS. And the main reason for that is I do use my MacBook Pro for all of my videos. So I cannot risk anything not working, Final Cut Pro, anything like that. And I really don't want to go through the hassle of having to downgrade, uh, downgrade uh, macOS. So macOS is the one that I'm going to rely on other people to actually do all the testing. Um, but for everything else, um, I have several Apple TVs throughout my house. Um, I have, if, if need be, I can always re re uh, return the iPhone back to uh, iOS 14. Well, the watch OS is the one that I was slightly skeptical about because I do use the watch every single day at work um, and it's pretty uh, incorporated into how I actually um, operate at work now. Um, it saves me having to use the phone quite a bit, but thankfully it's it's been fine so far and um, just judging off previous betas that I've tested as well, um, Apple do seem to be a lot, lot better when it comes to reliability of the betas. So I've not really got any worries uh, on, on that front. So yeah, uh, in terms of uh, iPhone, Apple Watch, uh, tvOS, they all seem perfectly fine. Hopefully somebody out there is also doing a similar thing with macOS and basically I'll get my updates from them as soon as that gets to the point where um, I think there's either a feature that I really can't live without um, or it gets to the point where it's reliable enough, then I'll also update those and update my MacBook and test that out as well. But until then, um, basically it'll just be the, these three platforms. If you do have any questions, best place to contact me is um, either in the comments or drop me a, uh, if, if it's something complex, something that you, you just want explaining, then Twitter is the best place to contact me. Uh, links are in the description below, as well as uh, on-screen cards. But uh, for everything else, I will be doing uh, update videos. So if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell icon, that way you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And I'd really, really appreciate if you do give this video a thumbs up. I know everybody will be spamming your timelines with videos on all, all these platforms. I do tend to do my videos slightly differently, concentrate on the things that um, interest me in terms of home kit, um, those kind of functionalities. So it's not um, the usual breakdown of every tiny fine detail that's different. So for example, everything Apple Pro has already put one video out and he's highlighting things as small as the icon for the camera app being slightly different. To me, that makes no difference. I don't I don't care about those kind of things. I care about the actual uh, feel and usability of the operating systems themselves and how they actually improve the usability for me personally um, and for anybody else out there that has a similar usage. So for those kind of videos, as I say, hit that subscribe button um, and hopefully I'll be bringing you more videos soon. And until the next one, thank you very much for watching.